Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss how can we use principal component analysis for dimensionality reduction in machine learning with the help of simple solved example. This is the solved example number 2. Link for other example is given in the description below. Principal component analysis that is PCA is a linear dimensionality reduction technique with the applications in exploratory data analysis and data pre-processing. In this case, we have been given a data set with uh, two features that is X and Y and there are 10 data points are given to us. We need to apply the principal component analysis that is PCA algorithm on the top of this data set and then we need to reduce the dimensionality from 2 to 1 in this case. Now we will discuss uh, the different uh, steps in principal component analysis. The first step in principal component analysis is to compute the coherence matrix. The question comes in front of us is what is coherence matrix? The coherence matrix C is always equal to coherence between xx, coherence between x, y, coherence between y, x and coherence between y, y here. So there are two dimensions are there. So we will get 2 by 2 coherence matrix in this case. Now again one more question comes in front of us. How to calculate coherence between x, x and coherence between x, y and so on. Now if you want to calculate the coherence between x, x in this case you can notice here both are xx here. So which is equal to summation of x minus uh, x bar that is mean of x multiplied by x minus x bar here divided by n minus 1. Let's assume that we have to calculate the coherence between x, y. There are different uh, uh, features here. So if you want to calculate the coherence between such kind of uh, features we can use this formula that is summation of x minus x bar that is the first one multiplied by y minus y bar that is nothing but second one divided by n minus 1 where n is the number of examples in this case. So totally 10 examples are there so it will become a 9 as the denominator in this case. Now what we do is we will try to calculate these values that is x bar, y bar and then we will try to calculate x minus x bar and so on and then we will construct this matrix here. For that reason I have created this table. Uh, the first column in this table is x, second one is y here. The next column is x minus x bar here. So for this one what is required for us? We need uh, x bar. To calculate x bar, first we need to take the summation of all these numbers. We will get 18.1 and then we need to take 18.1 divided by 10 which is equal to 1.81. That is the mean of x here that is nothing but x bar. Similarly, we need y bar in the next column. So that is the reason I will add all y column values. We will get 19.1 divided by 10 that is equal to 1.91 here. Now once you calculate the mean of x and mean of y, we can easily calculate these two columns here. That is nothing but the x minus x bar, x is equal to 2.5 minus 1.81, you will get the value here. That is nothing but 0.69. Similarly, second one, 0.5 minus 1.81, that is nothing but minus 1.31 and so on. Next, we need to calculate y minus y bar. y is present here, that is 2.4 minus 1.91, which is equal to 0.49. Similarly, we need to calculate the remaining values here. Now once you calculate x minus x bar and y minus y bar, what is required in this coherence matrix is x minus x bar multiplied by x minus x bar. That is nothing but x minus x bar bracket square is required. So x minus x bar is present here. We will take the square. You will get this column. Next we will calculate y minus y bar bracket square because we have coherence of y y here. So y minus y bar is present here. We will take the uh, y minus y bar square. You will get this column. Now, if you want to calculate coherence of xy or yx, we need x minus x bar multiplied by y minus y bar. We need to multiply these two columns, you will get this column here. So, that is what I have done here. Next, what we need to do is we need to take the summation and then we need to take uh, divided by n minus 1. So, sum divided by n minus 1 I am doing here, which is equal to 0.6166 for x minus x bar bracket square. For y minus y bar bracket square, it is uh, 0.7166. And for the third last one, we are getting 0.6154 here. Now, once you calculate these values, we will put in this coherence matrix so that we will get the final coherence matrix here. So, coherence of xx is nothing but this one. Coherence of yy is nothing but this one. Coherence of xy and yx is nothing but this one here. So, this is how the coherence matrix looks like in this case. Now, once you construct the coherence matrix, uh, the next step is to calculate the eigenvalues of this uh, coherence matrix. Again, the question comes in front of us is how to calculate the eigenvalues of a matrix here. 
the eigen values of a matrix is calculated using this uh, characteristic equation that is uh, determinant of uh, c minus uh, lambda i is equal to 0 where c is the covariance matrix and i is the identity matrix this is the covariance matrix and this one is the identity matrix because this is the uh, 2 by 2 uh, covariance matrix we have to take 2 by 2 identity matrix in this case now once you simplify it you will get uh, 0 0.6166 minus lambda 0.6154 second one is uh, 0 0.6154 0.7166 minus lambda here which is equivalent to 0. Now we have to take the determinant. The determinant is nothing but uh, the multiplication of uh, these diagonal elements minus the multiplication of uh, these diagonal elements. Uh, that is what I have written here which is equivalent to 0 in this case. Now we have to simplify this one. Once you simplify this one you will get uh, lambda square minus 1.333 lambda plus 0 0.0630 here. Again we have to simplify this uh, quadratic equation. You can use the calculator for this purpose because we have the fraction numbers here. Now, once you simplify this uh, quadratic equation, you will get uh, lambda 1 is equal to 0 0.049 and lambda 2 is equal to 1.282 here. So, these are the two uh, eigenvalues for the given coherence matrix here. Now, once you calculate the eigenvalues for the given uh, uh, coherence matrix, the next step is to calculate the eigenvectors here. Now, the question is how to calculate the eigenvectors again. The eigenvector is calculated using this uh, formula that is uh, C coherence matrix multiplied by the first eigenvector which is equivalent to lambda that is the uh, eigenvalue under consideration multiplied by P1 that is the eigenvector here. Now there are two eigenvalues are there so you will get two eigenvectors so that is the reason I have taken P1 here uh, and then I will consider lambda 1 in this case. Next time I will take V2 and then lambda 2. So I will put the values C is the, this one that is a coherence matrix. Uh, v1 is x1, y1 here and uh, lambda is 0 0.049 that is the first uh, eigenvalue multiplied by again v1 that is nothing but x1, y1 here. Now I will simplify the left hand side that is nothing but uh, the multiplication of these two matrices. This row is multiplied to column it will become 0 0.6166 multiplied by x1 plus 0 0.6154 multiplied by y1 here. On the right hand side we will get 0 0.049 multiplied by x1 here. So that is the first equation in this case. Second equation is we need to multiply this row to this column. Uh, we will get this on the left hand side and 0 0.049 y1 will be on the right hand side here. So these are the two equations we will get. Now we will take this on the left side and then this one on the right hand side uh, so that we will get 0 0.5676 x1 because if I take it on the left hand side it will become minus and if I take it on the right side again it will become minus over here. Similarly I will do one thing. I will keep this x1 as it is. I will take this y1 term on the right hand side. We will get one more uh, equation here. Now, when, uh, what we do here is uh, we will assume that the value of y1 is equal to 1. If I put the value of y1 is equal to 1, uh, we will be able to calculate the value of x1 uh, using either 3 or 4 equation in this case. Or else what we can do is we can put the value of x1 is equal to 1 and then uh, we can calculate the value of y1. Both are perfectly fine here. Uh, in this case, I have uh, put the value of y1 is equal to 1 and then I have calculated the x1 value here. So, if uh, y1 is equal to 1, the x1 value is equal to minus uh, 1.084. The first eigenvector v1 is x1, y1. So, this is the x1 and this is the y1 in this case. Now, what we need to do is uh, we need to normalize the values of this eigenvector. We cannot take as it is. So, what we need to do is uh, the value of uh, eigenvector should be divided by the length of that eigenvector here. So, first question comes in front of us is how to calculate the length of that uh, eigenvector. The length is nothing but what? Square root of the element square. For example, A is the one element, we have to take A square. If B is the another element, we have to take B square here. Now, we will calculate the normalized values of eigenvector V1 here. That is nothing but minus 1.084 divided by uh, the square root of first element is what? Minus 1.084 square. That is what I have written here. Plus 1 square here. Similarly, for the second element. Second element is 1 here. 1 divided by the denominator is same here. Now, once you solve these values, you will get V1. V1 is equal to minus uh, 0.735 and 0.678 in this case. So, this is the first eigenvector. Similarly, we have to calculate the eigenvector for the second uh, eigenvalue that is uh, lambda 2 is equal to 1.284 here. So, we will calculate V2. Uh, V2 is x2, y2 in this case. The only difference between this and the previous case is, uh, in the previous case, I have considered lambda 1 here. Now, I have considered lambda 2 in this case. Again, we will uh, try to take the multiplication on the left hand side here. So, this row is multiplied to this column. You will get uh, 0.6166x2 plus 0.6154y2 
which is equivalent to 1.284 x to here. That is the equation number 5. Similarly, for the second row, this row is multiplied to column. This is equal multiplied to y to here. You will get another equation. Again, we have to simplify these two things. You will get 7 and 8 equation. Again, I am going to put y2 is equal to 1 here. If I put y2 is equal to 1 in any of these equations, you will get x2 here. So, y2 is equal to 1 here and you will get x2 in this case. That is nothing but v2 here. v2 is the eigenvector. Again, we have to normalize this v2. How to normalize? The element divided by length of this uh, eigenvector here. That is nothing but square root of 0.922 bracket square plus 1 square here. Similarly, for the second element. Now, once you solve these uh, equations, you will get V2 is equal to 0.677 and 0.735. So, this is how we can calculate the eigenvectors for both the eigenvalues in this case. Now, we have calculated the eigenvalues. We have calculated the eigenvectors here. Now, what we need to do is, uh, we need to select the eigenvector uh, uh, based on the eigenvalues here. In this case, I want to reduce the uh, two-dimensional data into one-dimensional data. So, I have to select one eigenvalue the eigenvalue which is having the maximum uh, value. So, in this case, if you compare lambda 1 and lambda 2, lambda 2 is having the maximum value. So, that is the reason I will select lambda 2. The associated the eigenvector is nothing but the principal component in this case. That is, V2 is the principal component. Let us assume that there are three dimensional data is there. I want to reduce it to two. So, what I am supposed to do? Out of three eigenvalues, I have to select two eigenvalues which are having the maximum uh, values. And then associated eigenvectors are the principal components in that case. So, in this case, uh, V2 is the principal component. Considering this uh, V2 principal component, what we need to do is we need to calculate the new feature vector. Because right now, uh, we have not done any modification to the feature vector. Feature vector contains how many features here? It contains two features. I want to reduce the dimensionality from 2 to 1 in this case. So, that is the reason the new feature set is always equal to the old feature set multiplied by the Eigen factor that is the principal component in this case. So, f is this one as written in the original data set multiplied by this v2. This is the v2 here. The given data set is of type 10 by 2 here and the Eigen vector is 2 by 2 here. Now, if I do the multiplication between these two things, we will get uh, you can say that 10 by 2 again in this case. Now, how the multiplication takes place? Each row is multiplied to this column here that is 2.5 multiplied by 0.677 plus 2.4 multiplied by 0.375. So, that is the first element. There is nothing but this element. Again, I will consider the next row that is 0.5 multiplied by 0.677 plus 0.7 multiplied by 0.735. That is nothing but this is the value. Similarly, we have to do the multiplication with respect to all rows and this column. You will get the 10 modified values here. The meaning of this one is previously we were having two dimensional now, we have reduced the dimensionality from 2 to 1 with the help of a principal component analysis in this case. Now, we will try to represent this data in the form of uh, the proper uh, diagrams here. The original data set looks something like this, uh, where the blue dots uh, represent the original data set. This uh, red circle represents the mean of the given data. That is, the uh, mean is uh, 1.91, 1.81 1 here. So, that is what I have drawn in this case. Now, if you want to project the new feature set on the new uh, axis here. So, first what we need to do is we need to move this particular axis from here to here. That is the mean here. So, you will get, you have to draw x axis here and then we have to draw y axis here. So, that is what I have done. This is the x axis and this is the y axis here. Now, what we need to do is uh, we have to check the v1 and v2. What is this v1? v1 is minus 0.735 and uh, point 678 that is x is minus 0.375 that is on this side y is plus side so you will be getting one value here this is the first value that is shown in the uh, green color similarly for v2 v2 is 0.677 and 0.735 that is again over here that is shown in the green color now once you get these two eigenvectors we need to draw a line which passes through this uh, origin as well as to those particular green dots here now, we will get this one line and this is the another line. This is nothing but the eigenvalue V2 here because it is with respect to these values and this is nothing but V1 here. Now, between V1 and V2, which one we have selected? V2 we have selected because its eigenvalue was more in this case. Now, what we need to do is we need to project this original data set onto this V2 here. You will get the new data set. 
once you project it you will get something like this the one which is shown in the uh, black color here so original data is projected on this uh, principal component uh, the original data set to contains uh, two dimensionals now it contains only one dimension in this case this is how we need to apply the principal component analysis for the given data set to reduce uh, the data from higher dimensionality to lower dimensionality in this case i hope the concept of uh, principal component analysis is clear if you like the video do like and share with your friends press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching